welcome to today's video. Um, this is one that I've been wanting to film basically since we started our channel. Um, and I have had a few videos where I've mentioned, you know, just little small tidbits here and there about PCOS and infertility and just trying to get pregnant and just a little bit of my journey with that. But I've not gone on into immense detail in how I was able to get pregnant with PCOS and so I am really really excited to be bringing you these videos because I am very passionate about a lot of these topics and yeah I am just really excited to share some stuff with you guys. The first thing I have to say that I mean anybody has to say when they're talking about personal experiences is um, I am not a doctor and in fact, a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about oppose what my doctor has told me. And so I feel like I need to like say that as a disclaimer, like that the things that worked for me were only found through like crazy amounts of research and trial and error and just really advocating for my, my body. Um, <clears throat> and don't mind me, sorry. I have got major allergies going on this week and I keep looking like I'm crying and I keep feeling like I'm gonna sneeze and it's just it's just where I'm at right now but I didn't want to not film just because I sound sick so anyway just bear with me yeah a lot of the things I'm about to say just you know I've done my own research and I've tried things and it may have worked for me but it might not work for someone else and so just take everything that I say with a grain of salt and also like do your own research I just I'm always encouraging people when I'm talking about these topics like just do your research like you have to if you care about your body and you care about these things, don't just take someone else's word for it. You know, dive head, head first and even if it seems scary or hard, I mean, if you, if you become passionate about these things and it becomes something in the forefront of your mind, it's more likely to happen because you're giving it your all. And I don't say that to discount those of you guys who have been trying to get pregnant for years and years and... I mean, I know, I personally know, like, even waiting months is also challenging, and, you know, there's no infertility story that is less than others. Like, every, every journey is sad in its own way and brings its own challenges. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to share how I got pregnant with my first son, Zeke. Um, his, his, uh, true name is, his birth name is Ezekiel James, and it means, his name means God Strengthens. And I just love, it's, it's, it was a strong name to us and we loved it. And it just cracks me up though because I had no idea how much God was going to strengthen us through our journey to conceiving him. But also after he was born, he was a very challenging baby. And so, you know, conception was hard. But then also like after he was here, there was the guilt of like, I don't know what I'm doing and this is so hard. and. I feel guilty that there are days I wish I could just put him back inside of me and you know the the journey of <laughs> those emotions it was also challenging so God strengthened us a lot through our <laughs> experience with Ezekiel so there will be two videos because my journey to getting pregnant with Zeke and my journey to getting pregnant with my second son Ezra um, and this current baby I am 22 weeks pregnant right now with my third son um, but my journey to getting pregnant with all three of them was vastly different. And so I plan on making a video um, about how I got pregnant with each one because like I said, very different experiences all three times. And I believe some of that is has to do with me healing my body and my gut health. And I believe that some of it has to just do with timing and like <laughs> God's timing ultimately. So. I'm going to start with Zeke. I have notes here that I took because I just don't want to forget certain things. You can go back, and I'm going to link these videos, but um, you can go back and watch. We did like a TTC um, series while we were trying to get pregnant with Ezra, and I would highly encourage you to go through those because it's going to be in major detail of like the things that I was on and the things that we were trying overall that video, those videos, even though there's only a few of them because we got pregnant with him really quick. Um, I think they're still really helpful and it really shares a lot about what I was on and the things that I was doing. Um, I take you with me on a doctor's appointment and stuff like that. So I highly suggest those videos. However, with Zeke, uh, just to give you a little bit of history, I was on birth control for 
Nope. I'm going to go even farther back. I have always been regular. My cycles have been regular. My um, periods have never been super painful or heavy. I've never really had any issues. Um, so I started my period when I was 13 years old. I was in eighth grade. I, f I felt a little bit like a late bloomer. And then once I, so everything was great. And then I went to college and I noticed my cycles kind of did a little like sinking, mostly because I lived on a dorm, in a dorm room full of girls. And I th I'm pretty convinced my cycle was just like hopping over the place, all over the place, just because it was trying to regulate with other females, um, cause that's a thing. And I mean, I didn't think much of it. My periods were still really healthy and they weren't like spread out. They just, they didn't start on the same day every month like they used to. I used to be so predictable that I would start the same day every month and the same time. It was like 11 a.m. and I would start my period. Like it was so crazy. I cannot believe I used to be that regular. So then fast forward a little bit. My husband, Zach, and I got engaged um, in August of 2012. That was a while ago. And I was 19 years old and he was um, 19 at the time as well. No, he had just turned 20. My hair looks so weird. What's happening? Oh, I'm going to just bring it down. Okay. So we got engaged extremely young and I don't have any regrets. I love the way that we were able to get married. I love that we have grown up together and experienced a lot of life together. Um, that's a story for another day, but we got engaged and then I decided to get on birth control because the last thing that I wanted at age 20, which is when we got married, was a honeymoon baby. I remember just being so scared of that and like, I remember feeling just absolutely horrified that I was going to have a honeymoon baby. And you know, at 20 years old, I just didn't feel ready. I wanted to enjoy my husband for a while. Like that was just where we were at, which is like funny now because had I actually like not done the things that I did, I honestly feel like a honeymoon baby would have been worth it in order to dodge anything that I had coming my way with the choices that I made. So all my friends were on birth control or getting on birth control that were getting married around the same time. And then a lot of, you know, my doctor, a lot of the things that he said was like, you just need to be on birth control if you don't want to get pregnant. And like, he just said, it's no big deal. Like we'll start you on a low dose. So I just didn't think anything of it. And so I got on the pill, I think it was October. 2012 and then within two or three months I had gained like crazy amount of weight it was like 15 or 20 pounds in just in a couple months and then I just felt so inflamed and I was a crazy person like my emotions my hormones were all over the place I could not control anything that came out of my mouth I just suddenly the way that I explain it when I'm telling people this story is it was like I was watching myself live my life, um, but I had no control over any of it. And during that time, I treated friends poorly. I treated, oh my gosh, Zach, I cannot believe he still married me. Like, to give you a reference of how bad things got, we were driving back to Illinois from Joplin, Missouri, to visit my family and anytime we were in the car for like an extended amount of time we would like end up in a big fight because you're like you know you're in a car for like eight nine hours and then like you just talk about all these like controversial things and you get in fights so anyway we were like arguing and i was just like i couldn't control anything i was just angry and i reach over and i'm like trying to pull the steering wheel while he's driving on the interstate like I was trying to kill us like what is going I don't even know I was just completely a crazy person and I know from a lot of the people that I've talked to about birth control like this is not uncommon like for your hormones to be very sensitive and for change in that endocrine system to be completely disrupted you know it's it's common for this kind of stuff to happen and I didn't know that at the time so I didn't know that I could talk to people about it I didn't know like I was just in a completely different stage of life than I am now and so I just didn't know what to do with it. And so 
fast forward we get married shockingly he's still married this crazy person and then i always joke i must have been really hot because like i'm joking but like seriously i cannot believe he married me like there are just days where i'm like oh my gosh like there was i just did so much wrong so he was he's gracious and he's gentle and that's those are my favorite things about him and he's so laid back and loving and i think he just god knew i needed him in my life at that time because he was so understanding um i had also gained 50 pounds in that one year that i was on birth control so i was on birth control october 2012 through november 2013 which is like a year and a month um and I gained 50 pounds. My doctor had switched my pill like four times because I kept telling him like, I don't feel right. Like I'm gaining so much weight. And he just kept saying, well, let's try this one. And then two months later, let's try this one. And I'm like, what? Like at the, at the end of the day, I'm surprised I didn't ask questions sooner because I don't know, to me, I guess it was just like no big deal to switch birth control that often. And just to like be plopped on all these different pills that were making me feel terrible. But even at one point, my parents kind of intervened and took me to a psychiatrist who diagnosed or who gave me like, I think it was Lexapro, which is a depression medication, like a mood suppressor. And so we even just tried to put a band-aid on it. Like it's just like one thing after another, you know? So then in November, I said, enough, I'm getting off of this. Like it's ruining our marriage. It's like destroying my friendships. And I just don't know what to do. Like I just, it's like, we'll just figure it out. Like condoms like pull and pray um maybe i'll look into some other form of birth control like i just at that point was just like i'm done like i can't do this i after i got off birth control i didn't have a period for nine months and that was super weird for me because my doctor told me once you get off birth control it might take your body a few months to regulate but i mean you should get your period back within a few months and then i just never did and then I had a period and I remember it was one of the most painful things I'd ever experienced. It was so heavy and so like full of clots and just like not normal. And I just didn't, again, didn't ask questions. I was like, maybe this is just like shedding everything that's been stopped up in me for a year, if a year and nine months. So then my period was never regular since that time. And then, so I would go like three months without it and then five months without it. And then it just kept spreading out farther and farther. I was just not having periods. Um, I finally went to a doctor. Like that next March, like it had been, time had passed. I had not been on birth control. We had not done, been doing anything except for occasional condoms and pull and pray. Like that, so I was like not getting pregnant either. I, I wouldn't say we were actively trying at that time, but you know, um, it could have happened had I been fertile. And so I went to my doctor and I said, I'm not having periods, everything feels off. I feel like better mentally and I had lost 10 pounds within a month of getting off birth control but everything else I was stuck with. So I was like, something is just not right. And so he sent me to a gastro doctor for the weight loss, like a gastroenterologist or whatever. And then as far as the hormone stuff, he did an ultrasound and diagnosed me with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and said that it was just a hereditary issue and that it's something that I was bound to have. So, you know, I'd never heard of this at the time and I remember leaving the office that day just really upset because he told me it was probably gonna be hard to have kids and that, you know, I needed to stay on some sort of birth control to monitor my symptoms. And like hearing that after my experience with birth control was just like shattering for me and I just, it wasn't an option. And I would say that that was the first time I just did not listen to my doctor. So then we literally just kind of sat on that diagnosis and really didn't do much. And we stopped um, preventing pregnancy in any form because we knew it would take a while. And so, I mean, yeah, that was kind of our story in Joplin. Then fast forward a little bit, we moved to Indiana in 2016. Yeah, May of 2016 and we still had not conceived and I we were at the point where I was moving closer to my family and we were just like, you know, we want babies and so we decided it would be time to, you know, actively try 
and try to figure out like fertility stuff and then if we didn't get pregnant in like six months we were going to go to a fertility specialist and so those six months pass we're trying my period's not regular i have no idea what i'm doing um no idea how to time it if i don't have a period tried to eat healthy tried some things then decided to go to a fertility specialist and he did a blood panel and it showed that um my hormone level uh what's it called prolactin was elevated and he was actually shocked that my breasts were not leaking because my prolactin level was so high that my body was acting like it was lactating and he was like that's so crazy so he put me on this pill called bromocryptin that it was supposed to lower my prolactin levels and help me maybe start ovulating because if my prolactin was that high then my body's acting like it's breastfeeding, which means I'm not ovulating typically. And so he thought that that would fix the issue. And so I was on bromocryptin to lower that prolactin level, but I was getting so, one of the side effects was sleepiness while driving, which sounds like a really random side effect, but um, it was true. And I would be so tired behind the wheel and then pull over to a rest stop to just like try to nap or something. And then I'd be wide awake. And I'd be like, okay, and then I'd get back on the road and I would be like falling asleep. Like it was, it was almost, it was dangerous. So I ended up getting off of that because it was just making me feel weird. I hate medication. Like I, my body does not respond well to it. I just don't feel myself when I'm on it. So I got off of that and then he said my insulin levels were high from PCOS, which is one of the symptoms of PCOS um, in a lot of people. And so he put me on metformin in order to... Uh, lower my insulin levels and hopefully get me ovulating and just get my body in a healthier place and so I got on metformin and started having major digestive issues whether it was like I was extremely constipated and then I would go from like that to like complete diarrhea like for weeks and I just once again did not feel myself did not feel good it made me feel like something was wrong in my gut and I, it didn't make me feel good so got off of that and at this time I was doing hair in a salon that didn't have like awesome ventilation and so you know that was a thought was like you know I'm surrounded by chemicals all day long like I kind of started to have those thoughts a little bit but then didn't think much of it then in to the salon one day walks um, one of my very good friends um, who at the time was not a friend she was just an acquaintance and she came in as a walk-in to get her hair done she wanted um, I think she wanted a perm and a color and um, she's just one of my real spunky friends who literally rocks anything that she <laughs> wants to do with her hair and so that day I spent a lot of time with her because those processes take a lot of time and which I haven't mentioned this recently, but I used to do hair. Um, and I quit my job when I got pregnant with Ezra. So anyway, I was doing her hair and she just starts talking about this product called Plexus. And, you know, at this time I was super like, I roll my eyes at stuff like that, like pyramid schemes, you know, people selling products and making money on it and then trying to get you on their teams and I'm just, I was not into that and I was not interested in that and, um, you know, but then she started talking about things like gut health and how it really affects everything in our body and our endocrine systems and our hormone levels and how if our gut is off, then everything else is off. And, you know, the thing that caught my attention most was that she was talking about our gut health and our digestive system and, you know, ridding your body of toxins. And so... I was like, man, like I was just on this metformin pill and it was not doing anything for me and it was just giving me major digestive like system issues and so she was like, you really should just try this product for like at least 30 days, like give it a chance. And so she, I, you know, went home, did a lot of research. That's actually when I started watching YouTube. Um, I googled a bunch of like Plexus videos and you know, you get a bunch of like negative stuff, but you also get some people that share their stories with it and I, I said I, I think I typed in like getting pregnant with plexus and there's tons of videos of people's stories getting pregnant with plexus and balancing their blood sugars and I hadn't at this time done any research on any of this stuff but I mean it was fascinating to me and I wanted to be one of those stories and so I texted my friend and I was like okay I'm gonna try it 
and I got the okay from Zach because we were like a month away from our fertility specialist had like referred us for to an IUI clinic and we were going to be starting Clomid which is another hormone um, prior to that to see if it could get me ovulating and so I was like you know what like that's going to be expensive we're about to go down this journey of like fertility treatments and I just was like if I'm going to spend you know a hundred and something on the plexus versus like thousands on that maybe that's a better thing to try first you know like one last thing and so I ordered it and was on it for about you know I got it at like the end of November or mid-November 2016 and then I was pregnant by Christmas Eve which I didn't know at the time but I got pregnant Christmas Eve I think that's our conception date crazy right and I don't know like I mean I probably still had some metformin in my system I mean the bromocryptin could have helped my prolactin levels you know we don't know what did it but it was a complete shock and a complete fluke and a complete miracle when I got pregnant with Zeke I had not had a cycle in months and so the reason I say it's a miracle is because we literally had no idea no way of tracking we had no possible way of knowing if I was going to be ovulating or not and at the time I hadn't been like testing for ovulation or anything and so it just he was just a true miracle because there's really no rhyme or reason to like I mean obviously I ovulated but like it was spontaneous and out of nowhere because it did not come from a period so I thought I definitely should mention that I ended up getting cut off in that video but I just wanted to close it out by saying yes um, I feel like this first video for how I got pregnant with Zeke is not necessarily as informative and hey try this try that um, it's just more of like documenting that you can get pregnant with PCOS and you know we all try so many different things to get pregnant and I definitely um, credit Plexus and just kind of waking up to how important gut health is um, so you know without this being like a Plexus I don't actually like sell Plexus I don't have a team but I am an ambassador with Plexus so I technically can sell it um, I'm gonna be putting my link that um, is linked to my account for either orders or you know you can get that discount if you become an ambassador as well so I'm gonna go ahead and put my link in the description below um, just in case anyone wants to check that out um, if you have any questions please comment below about any of the video um, I'm happy to share any details that I maybe have left out I'm sure there's some so anyway thank you for watching this and stay tuned because I also filmed that same day um, the how I got pregnant with Ezra video and that one I think took a little bit more brain power and a lot more research and um, just a lot more intentionality behind what I was doing. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.